Hi, uh, good afternoon. My name is Maher Lewis and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, the, the following. Um, so don't get frustrated. It, it does work. It's very dynamic and it's very useful. So uh, I'm going to show you to you right now. There is a uh, uh, skill builders yeah. Anthony. Yeah. I don't know. You want to make a comment on those? Yeah. So uh, I think a couple webcasts ago they talked about it, but the uh, our our technical documentation department has been releasing these skill builders, which are small tutorials that augment what was released in the product, and they're up on the website um, under the civil3d.com section. Um, and those skill builders, uh, like I said, augment these with the existing tutorials, and there's one particularly on profiles and profile labeling for views and things like that. Yeah, there's one that's really nice. It, it shows you uh, for all the elements in the profile view, uh, maybe maybe as we switch here, we can pull that one down, but it shows you where to go to edit all the parameters to, to put together this profile view here, or, or a right. typical profile view. So they're really um, okay. 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 So, a couple other things, and then we're going to uh, take on some of the questions that are coming in here. Um, I think most of you may know this, but this came up in the news group a couple times. So, I just want to show. Uh, it comes up periodically. This is just a simple corridor, and the when you. When you edit the sections, so if I right, uh, fortunately we can't right click, you edit sections, I'm going to select this corridor, the, zoom in here, so here we're looking at the section at a particular station here, and this green line here is the existing ground surface in here, and this comes up periodically how, we're, how that visibility is controlled, and what we're looking at there is that's the actual surface being sliced, or the, the existing ground surface. And it really is any surface that's part of the, that's being referenced as part of the model. So when you start setting your logical names and are referencing a surface, those, you can actually have multiple surfaces appear in here. Now the display of this is coming from, I'm going to get out of the view edit section editor, it's actually coming from the display characteristics of the surface itself. And it's the 2D border. So if I edit the surface style, this isn't the most obvious thing, but it, it uh, oops, went into the property here. Yes, uh, apologize for the way this is flickering. It's, uh, it's just be experiencing network problems okay. at the office. So you'll notice the border. I'm just going to turn this border off on the surface, the 2D border. And now if I were to go back into the view edit corridor section, you'll notice that that, that surface is, is no longer visible in here. So uh, most people want that in here. So the question has been, how do I get that to show up? And it's 2D border display that you want to that you want to be using to make sure you get your existing ground surfaces to show up in the section view editor. Okay. All right, now, another one here, I just want to show uh, how to use a multi-view block in a point label. So multi-view block, I'm going to create a new drawing here, and I'm just going to start from one of the standard templates. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go to Design Center, and Civil 3D ships with uh, a large amount of symbology. It's uh, everything that, that was included with Symbol Manager. In, uh, in Land Desktop, and if I go to Civil 3D, under Data, expand this out, uh, down in here we have Symbols, and if we expand the Symbols, 
You can see all the uh, Kogo symbols in here. And I'm going to expand this multi-view block node. So multi-view blocks are blocks that have representation in, in both plan and, and uh, 3D view. And I'm going to go down to utilities and expand this out. And you'll notice this fire hydrant, so I'm just going to use this as an example, is really made up of two blocks. Okay, so there's a, a model block and then there's the plan view of the block. But in order to use these in Civil 3D, you really want to work from the, uh, a block containing them. What I'm going to do is just move Design Center over here a little bit, and I'm just going to take and drag this in, and it's prompting for insertion point. I'll just pick a location, scale, rotation angle. Okay, so, so if I zoom extent here now, so this is the block in uh, a 2D view. If I select the block and rotate it, I'm in the, uh, so this is the object viewer. How's that coming across, Anthony? I can't tell. I lost all Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Can you see that, Anthony? Uh, Peter, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's a multi-view block. So this block has a, a 2D representation and a, and a 3D representation. So when you use these, you can use these in your point label style, but you really want to use them as the, as the combined block reference. So I'll just do that right now quickly. I'm going to get out of the viewer. And here we're going to expand the drawing. I'm going to go to point, and we'll go to point style. We'll create a new point style, and let's call this MV block. And for the marker, now I'm going to use the uh, an AutoCAD block for the marker. And here's the fire hydrant block. So this is a combination of the. 2D and the 3D representation. I'm going to select that. And that's it. So now let's create a point. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Oh, one other thing we need to do is got to make sure I'm going to go back to my MD block here. And I'm going to go to the display tab and just make sure that we're actually viewing this in both. Uh, 2D view and a, and a 3D view. I'm going to go to 3D and I'm going to enable the marker and the label in this case. So we could enable these independently in a 3D view. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is just create a point. must be coming across pretty choppy because it's choppy here. Um, so now I'm just going to use that point label style we just created called MV block. And we'll use just the standard label style and we'll create a point manual. Put it right here. So it's description is test. Elevation 100, and there we go. So I'm going to zoom out now. Scales, obviously. Give it a zoom. Extent. There we go. So now we have a point here with a label. And now you'll notice if we go into the object viewer, we're going to find that. We're going to find that that, that that block... No, but I'm telling you right now, okay? Anyways, that concludes this video. Thank you for watching.